keeps you from being courageous and doing the right thing. And I'm not even gonna define what the right thing would be, but whatever you think of the right thing is for your life, what keeps you from doing that? Fear is one reason. Fear of consequences, fear of harm, fear of pain, fear of being uncomfortable, fear of backlash, fear of negative um, you know, reviews, fear of being wrong, right? That's one reason why we don't do the right thing. So laziness is another reason that we don't do the right thing. Because we're just lazy sometimes, right? I mean, the Bible has a word for it. It's one of the seven deadly sins. It's sloth. And sometimes we don't do the right thing because we just don't care enough. We don't give a rip, even about our own selves. We don't care enough to do the right thing and exercise self-discipline or self, you know, get to bed on time or eat right or go exercise because we're just, we're not caring enough about ourselves. We're not stewarding ourselves well. We get that lazy couch potato, nothing matters, apathetic, slothful feeling and there's nothing to live for, nothing to stand up for, nothing to die for. And so there are some things that are worth dying for. There are some things worth standing up for. The problem is we don't know what the outcome is. You know, I think this is really true when God says to us, let your light so shine. But if we are so cluttered with busyness or burdens or worry or fear, we're just like putting a bushel over our head. We can't let our light shine. We can't be authentic. We can't be real. We don't have to be perfect, but we can't be our true self if we're cluttered with all kinds of junk around us. And sometimes we're just too lazy to clear, clear the desk off. I think it's really important that we face our fears or we face our obstacles, we face our challenges and laziness, fear, uncomfortable. And I think one of the ways that we begin to develop courage to do the right thing is to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That we might have to speak out politically uh, against some of this craziness on both sides. We might have to speak out spiritually to, to pastors who um, just don't get it. And so what gives us the courage to do the right thing? What helps us to put our brave on and say, okay, God, I don't know. I don't know what's on the other side but I have one life and I want to live it well. I don't want my story to get lost in my fear or in even my consequences or, or the, the situation. Can you think of a couple of biblical characters, women specifically, who stood up for what was right? How about Deborah? How about Esther? How about the Hebrew midwives? who were ordered to kill the babies, and they didn't. They lied, they said, ah, they just come out too fast. We, they're born before we get there. All right, let's look at a woman who stood up for what was right, and it didn't turn out right. All right, and it was Esther's predecessor, Vashti, Queen Vashti. Her husband, the king, Xerxes, asked her to come and dance in front of his guests after a drunken orgy that they had been in or a drunken party or whatever. And she said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to degrade myself. It'd be like your husband asking you to, you know, watch porn with him or, or him asking you to participate in a threesome. And she said, no, I'm not going to do that. She stood up for what was right and it cost her. It cost her. She lost her crown. She was banished and the king replaced her with Esther. And so, yeah, sometimes standing up for what's right costs us. It's not just about doing the right thing for others, but about doing the right thing for ourselves and for our children. And that might mean speaking up against injustice. It might mean telling the truth. It might mean going to your pastor and giving evidence of abuse if you have it. It might mean doing that for your family's welfare, not to tattle on your husband, but to say, this is, this is, this is wrong and we need help. Can you help us? And a person has to want help to get the help. But you might be the courageous Vashti who has a terrible outcome, or you might be the Queen Esther who has a good outcome. Esther didn't know what the outcome would be either, right? But she did the right thing. Courage, bravery, whatever that is, is never a feeling, okay? We don't feel courageous. We feel afraid, right? There's your virtues, like your virtue is courage. I'm a virtuous person. I'm going to act courageously even though I feel afraid. So we have to make a decision here. 
are we going to live and write our story, however our life story plays out, like Esther's life story, like Vashti's life story, all these characters are real characters, just like you, just like me, we're gonna have a story to tell someday. Are you gonna write your life story from your feelings and your circumstances? Or are you gonna write your life story from your virtues? And so we don't wanna let our temporary feelings of fear, loss, laziness, shame, any of those keep us from our best self, from the light that God wants us to shine, because that will write a completely different story. So I would encourage you to read 2 Peter 1, and God says, add to your faith, and all these different virtues, virtues, not feelings, we have them, and, but we don't want to let them control us. They have us for a moment, but we can decide how to act and we can do the right thing courageously, not because we feel courage, we might feel afraid, right? But we do courage because that's who we want to be.